Hey, what's going on? Cody from Dimeback Firearms. Here we are on the bench again, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the Gen 4 DV9 and why it's one of my favorite little pocket pistols. Now, everybody knows that we had the, well, pretty much the Gen 1, 2, 3, and then here we are on Gen 4. And a lot of improvements with the Gen 4. Um, some of those improvements kind of piggybacked off of Gen 3, but right off the rip, the biggest thing that you're gonna see Hey there, we got asked by a lot of people, hey, why don't you put a last round hold open on it? So there she is. We had to lengthen the slide just a little bit. Um, yeah, something that you're not even gonna notice, uh, Glock style sights. So now any of your aftermarket Glock 42, 43 sights are gonna fit it. Uh, we went with a stainless barrel. It's also plus P rated now. Your trigger's improved as far as reset. Uh, you're going to have a little bit of a shorter trigger pull. You're going to have that initial just spring load take up. But you're going to have your nice break and now short reset. So you still have that initial take up, but you're going to have that half reset. Before, back in our earlier models, you're going to see it kind of extend out into the trigger guard. We also went... Yeah, it takes down nice too. We also went with a one-piece recoil. Uh, guide rod and spring made things a little bit easier than that two piece that we had that when you took it out it you know you got to keep track of all the parts so in and out real nice and easy you got drop your barrel in center your recoil spring center it up drop it on ready to go function check everything works this firearm, the DB9, is so easy to carry, it, and it's hard to explain it to you just by showing it to you on the camera. When you actually put this thing on you and carry it, it's just, man, you're going to wind up going everywhere with it. It's going to be something that, um, even if you're just walking to the mailbox to check the mail, most likely you're going to start taking a firearm again. Hold six rounds, and if you look at most of your um, defensive si situations, you know what I mean? It rarely goes past six rounds. I'm not saying this needs to be your, your only firearm, but this needs to be added into your tool chest of uh, tools. So owning the DB9, obviously you were looking for something small, tiny, easy to carry. And uh, we did recently add a pinky extension to lengthen it, make it a little more comfortable, but uh, people with larger hands still, m still may feel like they don't have enough real estate. But one thing I like to do with the DB9 is I like to replace the bottom plate with the flat bottom plate that comes in with your box. And a lot of people don't even realize that this is in their box when they buy the firearm. I want this firearm to be as small as possible. So what I'm gonna do, come in here at the bottom, take your plate off, keep your thumb over so you don't lose your spring. Take your other bottom plate. Let's get her on there. Drop her on, make sure it's locked into place. One thing old uh, mag guy told me that anytime you take your mag apart, go ahead and give it a nice punch. Make sure everything's seated, everything's back where it needs to be. So now, with the fat, a flat bottom plate, I find with two fingers on the firearm and my pinky underneath is the most comfortable way to carry this firearm and the most compact way to carry this firearm. So that is how I like to run my DV9. Now there is some other options out there. Uh, obviously, a majority of the people are gonna look at this firearm and think of it as a pocket pistol. Well, there's companies out there like Technoclip that make clips for these. And yes, I'm talking about the, this clip. You know, I'm not talking about the magazine. Uh, so anyways, you can go out there, you can buy Technoclips for it so that you can put it in your pocket, have a spot for it to hang on. And, you know, for those people that are, you know, against pocket carrying and stuff like that, they do make, you know, sticky holsters. They're a good company. I know uh, DeSantis makes one as well, and we're gonna do another video on a whole bunch of different holsters. But this kind of protects everything in your pocket, uh, also covers up the trigger guard, doesn't let anything get in there. I find it to be a little bulky and a little hard to get it out of your pocket, but if you are gonna pocket carry, you kind of gotta use your judgment and stuff. Like if you're in an area and you think, you know, you need your firearm a little, you know, a little quicker, I would probably move it and make it more readily available. Um, so, I mean, for example, we can go in and say I had this in my pocket and I'm in my car and I'm about to get gas. Maybe I would like to go ahead and just present it 
into the same, say my coin pocket, set it there. I'm out there pumping gas and then that now I'm ready on it. So it's just the judgment call. That's you. Everybody's going to carry a little different, but it's a micro gun. It's tiny. It's nine millimeter and it's going to go with you everywhere you go. All right. So since this fire has been around for a while, we've had plenty of time to get feedback from our customers and, you know, hear their likes and also hear their dislike, uh, dislikes. So one thing that is kind of on the fence between people and some people understand it, but some people are concerned about it is the mag release and how, you know, how you have to push this to get your mag to drop free. You have to give it good, nice centered push on it. So if you have like long fingernails or anything like that, and you're trying to use just the pretty much the face of your thumb and push on it, you're going to have a hard time releasing it mainly because this is a pocket firearm and the last thing you want to happen is something in your pocket or it push up against your body and then that happened inside your mag or inside your pocket. So now you're, you're going to pull it, you're going to fire it and your mag is going to shoot out. Definitely do not want that to happen. So we really like that it's a, you know, decently hard push to get your mag release. The other thing is going to be your, your slide stop. We've added a, uh, pretty much a shroud to protect it. So without the magazine in it and trying to manually lock it back can be fairly tricky. You're going to find that you have to kind of just get the meat of your finger and lift up. The reason we did that is because with a micro firearm here, we've, we've kind of seen that people were prematurely engaging the slide stop. So what we'd see, you know, round two or round three, their thumb would kind of ride up on the slide stop and they would get a premature lock back. That's the last thing you want to happen during a defensive situation. So some people look at it as a, a negative. I look at it as a huge positive. It just gives me an added feature of not interfering with me firing rounds down range. So for any reason that you needed to lock it back and you, or you have a hard time with their empty mag, rack it back, load your mag up, load your round in it. Say you're wanting to run six plus one, drop your mag in, release it, load it back up. Now you're good to go. So those are some things that you're really gonna have to get your hands on and feel for yourself. But at the end of the day, you're gonna find that as a added feature that's gonna protect this gun and keep it ready to rock at any moment's notice. All right, so some misconceptions about, uh, you know, micro or, or smaller firearms is that they're easier to shoot. You know, they're easier to carry. Yes, they're easier to carry, but now you have all this explosion and recoil and everything happening all in a small little package you know on your larger firearms you have more mass to absorb the recoil so now you're gonna you're gonna have a little more felt recoil and you're also gonna feel that the slide is gonna be a little harder to pull back and then on a micro firearm it's like where do i put my hand to actually rack this back um, i found coming over the top using most of my force from my right arm just to push forward and let it go through my hand Obviously we have the texture pads in the front so you can do your, you know, finger and thumb, kind of like a little press check. Um, but when you are looking at these, make sure that you have the strength to go ahead and rack the slide. And a, a good rule of thumb is if you have an empty mag on there and you're able to lock it back, you have enough strength to pull it back. Uh, but that is one thing that you need to check. Um, if you find that you're on the borderline of not being able to pull it back, there is companies out there that make, uh, pretty much skateboard tape designed for this firearm. Uh, Arachnagrips, I think the company's called. They got a couple of different cool, some with logos, some with different designs on them, but it just gives you a little more texture uh, to grip a hold of it. And obviously you can go out there and buy your own skateboard tape, add it to the sides, cut it to how you want, make it easier. Uh, you will also find that if it, you are recoil sensitive, that when you go buy ammo, you know, start out small and buy small quantities of multiple brands and you'll find that ammo is not equal. You know, you could have four different brands of 115 grain and one's going to be a lot more pleasant to shoot than the other. So get you a couple different brands of ammo, find what you can handle because firearm can handle plus P now. What I personally like to sit there and shoot plus P to this. No, uh, with the, with any firearm plus P is just going to add, you know, a little wear over time, especially in a, a micro firearm. So I would still try to stick with, you know, 115 or 124 grain, even though it'll still shoot the 147s or anything like that. But just keep that in mind when you're looking at micro pistols. I have one thing that happens a lot when people are out exercising and running and have sweatpants on, 
you know, it, it becomes very hard to carry. And then you've got to start getting creative on how you carry. So people started coming out with belly bands and stuff like that where you can strap them on, put it on. Some people started carrying, you know, little jogging vests and stuff. They're kind of incognito. Well, this little, I think this one's from Merck, you know, just a small little compact one to carry your wallet or something while you're running. Well, we find that the DB9 fits perfect in there. Slap that on. Go for a little jog, something happens, pull it out. Hey, back up, you know? So you have that option. My buddy over at uh, Ace Tac, you know, we started recently selling some of these on our website. Got these little Ace Tac. I personally like to run with it, you know what I mean? It gives me a little weight. Obviously I'm exercising, so I like to pack it down with as much weight as I can. But inside here, yeah, yep. Here comes my little red dot DB9 again that y'all are always asking about. Hey, any little machine shop that you got around locally, most likely they'll machine you a uh, a optic cut in it. Pretty easy to do. But, yep. So, a million ways of carrying it. Get creative. Be safe. Um, be safe when you do it. There's plenty of companies out there that have trigger guard covers, pocket holsters, in the waistband, outside the waistband. We will have another video coming up. Um, it's just it's kind of hard tracking down all our holsters at one time. So we had a lot of companies send us out some. They should be here soon. And uh, we'll get you another video of showing it and probably just drawing and shooting a little bit of time in the, uh, the range. Pulling from the waistband, pulling from, you know, even something simple as a koozie. You know, it, I may get a little hate for carrying something like that. But until you try it and do it, it may, it may wind up being one of your favorite things uh, and easiest way of carrying it. So. Again, go out there and check them out. So for cleaning and maintenance in your firearm, we're not gonna get into a full depth, but show you how it's kind of easy and what you need to do. Obviously, drop your mag, clear it, do your takedown like we talked about. Your whole trigger group's like pretty much exposed. It's gonna be very easy to just kind of spray in there. I personally like to take an air hose, blow. Um, I like a more of like a dryer film oil that doesn't really keep everything oily and res uh, a lot of residue. So spray that in there, like G96. I love G96. I spray it in there, blow it out. It uh, blows out dry, but it's still protected. I like to use that on the trigger group. Take your recoil spring out, your barrel. Obviously take your brush, clean your barrel out. Taking down your firing pin, cleaning out that pocket, push down, remove the rear cap. Pull your firing pin out, clean inside the channel. With any striker fire, you don't want a lot of oil in your firing pin channel. Oil it up, clean it, dry it off, reassemble it, drop it in, take your rear cover, push down on the back, push in until it snaps in. Drop the barrel back in, make sure your firing pin block is, uh, is oiled and it's moving free. So just give that a nice, good little push. Make sure you have spring tension on it. Make sure that your firing pin is stopping. Push down, push in on your firing pin block. Make sure your firing pin goes down, good to go. Reassemble your recoil spring, center it. With a micro firearm like this, you're really gonna notice that if it's off center, you're gonna have a hard time putting your slide back on. Make sure it's perfectly centered. Put it back on the rail. Do your function check. Clear, pull, keep trigger held. Rack it, release the trigger, make sure reset worked, pull the trigger again, good to go. So, all right, now that we've had a, kind of like a quick look at the DB9, uh, let's just, you know, quickly touch back on a few things we talked about. Lightweight, super easy to carry. Slim, you almost forget that you have it. Um, all the upgrades that the Gen 4 has now, um, why the mag releases uh, as hard as it is to release, why we did it that way the shrouded uh slide release the different ways of carrying it even uh outside the waistband oh already had one in there see i already forgot i had one in there outside the waistband still disappears easy comfortable you forget it's there koozie if you're a minimalist and you're just walking out there and you want something to just protect your skin in the waistband so pocket carry 
Glock style sight. So if you're in the market for night sights and you don't particularly like the ones that we have on our firearm, there's plenty out there on the market for you to get. The easy takedown, now you're gonna find that it, even those buttons are a little slim and kind of hard to get to. So quick little easier way until you catch on on how to do it is to clear the firearm. Some people like to pull the trigger first. I like to pull it after. So clear, slight push down, come over the top, push the assembly catch straight down towards the trigger guard, keep them held, take the slide off, let the weight of the slide drop down, pull the trigger, slide falls off, lift it off. That is, and then reassembly, just push it back on, lock it, and then always do a function check after you put your slide back on. So now that you know everything about the DB9, go out there and check out the specs. It's easier for you to look at the specs on paper. We have that posted everywhere. Go to our website, go check out other reviews of the DB9. There's plenty of them out there. Make sure you're looking at the Gen 4 when you look at reviews. And hey, thanks for being a part of Dimebag's family. And I, I hope you love this firearm and respect it and understand it as much as I do and you come to enjoy it. Thanks for watching.